You don't notice it at first, the waves eroding a family into a mountain. But you get old enough to put it together, to see yourself from a higher peak. The collision of tectonic plates beneath you. Something we are destined to do, a diasporic bird's eye view, a lay of the new land, a map we have yet to trace with our hands, a lifetime of piecing together a puzzle to realize what is missing. I used to think my parents were supernatural, massive, immortal, and mountainous. But the older I got, the more I was subject to the lessons of loss. I could see the rivers flow in the cracks they forgot, the red in their blood, fresh as Canadian spring, holes in their hull, half sunk at sea. They made it to this coast already a wreckage. I only noticed their cries echo over time zones the more I speak their language. The sound of gasping for air amidst the crashing waves of my own drowning and they could never save me like I could never save them and no one escapes the sun. All we could do is apply CPR to the beat of an ancestral drum hoping the salt water doesn't fill our lungs and I wonder if all floating Filipinos are cursed with the expectation of invincibility. Because I've watched them lift their resilience by the shoulders in front of the mirror. It doesn't fit them like it used to, but they wear it still as tradition triumphs over tragedy for their sons and their grandson, a pattern passed down as sacrifice. And I used to wonder why they would hide beneath the smile forced layer, a desperate prayer until I began to be the same. My parents were strong but never immune to the sanding down of a relentless tide, and maybe I. I'm empowered by something sedimentary on the ocean floor. Survival isn't always strength, and strength isn't always something we ask for, but still, something instilled we cannot help but know.
I find myself asking the succulent in my apartment if it can ever feel the violence of its own propagation. If it can understand irony, that the very act of uprooting sounds like a contradiction, an unsheathing of a rusted machete, a burial in reverse, something never meant to happen. But my family says it was, and I would be a fool to not believe them, as I have felt the earth that they were planted in with my bare hands, dry, scorching, and unforgiving. It is easy to see the reason they could not stay, the reason they wanted to be more than carved this way, but they called it a better life, though, as if for different angles we aren't framed, as if the unfamiliar currents haven't brought us to our knees deep, praying for something better, for better weather. But either way, as we fray, I pray for rain, to soak the pain of remembering, the dexterity to use root as thread, so shut the wounds of this great dismembering, reminding ourselves of the empty space, our unearthing, something missing. Because resolve tells us all, in order to move forward, we must first look back and we try. But it hurts to remember everything we no longer have, maybe that's why. I knew early on that everything I am must fit in a luggage light enough to be picked up and carried, swung over your shoulder from the carousel, because are we all, because intersections overlap. An eternal act of remembering and forgetting, like fans woven from palm trees, the rings around a maple tree. And if so, then maybe this disconnection will too fold over in soil, become shade for a future smile and turmoil. And as the sun breaks through, shine a light on what we've built and how it fell now, either way, at the end of days, we become another story to tell.
I still remember the way the Toronto skyline lights up like a manila Christmas when you squint your eyes. I still remember when cancer took my Lola, I kept her Bible with all of her notations, desperately trying to find an answer, a way of preservation, or an incantation, something to bring her back. But her dying wish was for us to be okay, to gather and laugh and eat like we did at her place, but we all live in different cities. And can I kind of hear the echoes of songs, of gongs and magic, but maybe I can string together the beads in my Lola's jewelry box, decades of our fathers and Hail Marys, and wear it like a medal, a reward for how far we've come, because I still sing, I still dream of a better life, I still cycle through this grief and gratitude like a butterfly knife, I still leave my brother's ashes in new places I see, I still leave bottles of letters in the sea for him to read, I still remember to hold my father more than his father held him, respect my mother more than her father did, because we all reunite with the ground of which we came. We are all carried away by the same ocean waves. We all clench to the climate from which our cliches are crafted from. So maybe the difference between habit and tradition is celebration. Because I know there's reprogrammable code coursing through us. The avoidance of devastation in a broken pattern. But a tradition is not bound by time itself, but rather what we lose and find again. Maybe our ghosts laugh loudly at our tendency to measure a life in distance travel, knowing all memories worth memorializing are all eventually unraveled. Only physical connection ends in separation, but a tradition is just a form of energy, like breathing, an immeasurable rhythm, like the wind, like a kiss, like flowers at graves, and maybe rotting is surrendering to change. All love comes with longing. All love comes with longing. All eternal love comes with longing. And so, what an unbearable blessing it is then to miss you.